So my question is um, about celibacy and chastity. Yep. Why are those you know, worldly principles, if you like, portrayed as spiritual growth? Like portrayed as important to spiritual growth. Yeah. So the two qualities were chastity and celibacy. celibacy. Let's look at celibacy first. And um, it has been commonly thought that if you're celibate, that you will get close to God better than any other time. Now the reason why this is often the case is because when we're not celibate, we're often so focused on the physical act of sexuality or, or of sex that we become devoid of spirituality in the process. In other words, sexuality and the expression of sexuality becomes just a totally emotionally driven and emotionally injury driven process. Now because of that obviously many people historically have recommended celibacy to get out of that cycle. And I don't recommend it myself. And I've had periods of, life, of my life where I've been celibate and I've chosen that for reasons and we'll talk about that a little later. But um, celibacy isn't necessarily going to bring you closer to God. In fact, unless you deal with your injuries towards the opposite sex and accept yourself as a sexual being, as part of it, sexuality being an integral part of your identity, you'd never be at one with God anyway, because you're in denial of a part of yourself. So that then can't be a vehicle to, say, a pure heart state. No. It's an avoidance. Yes, it's an avoidance. So there are many people at the natural love pinnacle, which is the sixth sphere, who do not engage in sexual activity at all. So they're in the spirit world, in the sixth sphere, and they do not have anything to do with sex because they believe with all their heart that that's the only way for them to be connected to God. Of course, they deny quite a lot in that process. The fact, the fact that we have sex organs in both the physical body and the spirit body proves, in fact, that God created sexuality to be a part of this process. But they don't think of that though. But they, they, they've been taught over and over that you've got to be pure, you know, you've got to be, and they then say purity can't be had if you're involved with sex. So therefore the teaching of celibacy for sex is the experience. Yep. Is, is not, is not the pathway, it's not, it's not the end. No, it'll, it, it'll help them remain in the sixth sphere and they'll have a lot of bliss in their life but they will not experience the complete bliss that occurs with the soul union ever until they recognise the difference. And a lot of soul damage does happen because people are driven by, soul, uh, by sexual injuries but that's some, so they can minimise their soul damage by not being driven by those injuries but in the end they need to deal with injuries. Yeah. So a person who's celibate often still has sexual injuries inside of themselves. They're just not expressing them, right? And they're just not feeling them. They're detuned from them. But they often still have them inside of themselves. And the only way you're ever going to be at one with God is by removing all injuries, including our sexual injuries, from inside of ourselves at the causal level. So now is the law of chastity in a religious sense that's advocated <coughs> Or in the, in, the, in the belief systems, is that then have the same result? When you say the law of chastity, if I sort of define it a little for everyone, more that more it's more depicting that promiscuity is an error. So in other words, so the reason why the law of chastity was created as a moral law to help people progress spiritually is that it, it was to remind people that actually promiscuity is actually going to cause you soul damage. And that is true. Promiscuity does cause you soul damage. So we'll talk about that in a minute, just, just all the different types of damages that occur at the soul level. And promiscuity is certainly one of them. So the law of chastity can certainly help you, right, remain free of those, of those soul damages that, that occur through promiscuity. But, like I said in the first century, if you long for a woman in your heart that's not your wife or not your partner, you've already committed a doctor in your heart anyway. All right? So the truth is that you can actually be living a life of chastity, and many who are doing it religiously are doing this, they live a life of chastity and every night they have all of these dreams about, you know, 
and how you know they'd like to be with this person, or like to be with that person, and they probably masturbate in front of pictures of different people with pornography or whatever, but still staying so cool, chaste. But at the soul level, the damage is there already, the sexual damage is there already that needs to be worked through anyway. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So it's pointless, like, living any law, whatever the laws are, it's pointless living it here if you're not feeling it in your soul. And that applies to the law of chastity. If you feel like going out and having sex with a hundred women, right, it's pointless you not addressing that issue at the soul level and just and just being chaste or being celibate to get over that issue. Because in the end, the issue remains within you. And, the, and this is all about dealing with all the issues that remain within us.